Hey everyone, it is July 1st here in Pennsylvania, the first day of the snapping turtle season. And I've got a lot, a lot of questions and I want to review a few things to get you guys started on setting lines for snapping turtles. There's a bunch of different ways you can legally harvest turtles in Pennsylvania. You can set lines, you can actually, in Pennsylvania, the only thing that you are legally allowed to noodle for is turtles. So, have fun doing that. I'll try it someday make a video. In Pennsylvania you are allowed 15 lines out at a time. Your limit of turtles is 15 per day and you're allowed 30 in your possession at one time. So after you guys catch a turtle you definitely want to put it in fresh water in a barrel and something it can't get out of and feed it um, at least for a couple days until your water is clean after you change it. But back to actually setting this and being legal. I've seen a lot of people set lines with smaller hooks. In Pennsylvania, the minimum size hook is three inches long and it has to be an inch from the shank to the tip of the hook. This is a 10 knot hook. It's actually a little bigger. It is uh, three inches by an inch and an eighth, I believe. But it's, it's bigger than minimum size. And the reason they have that in Pennsylvania is so you don't catch smaller turtles. A small turtle can't get this down its throat, therefore you won't catch it with this. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how I put leaders on and how I rig my lines. Right here I have, this is 80 pound, um, nylon coated steel leader. These are double collared sleeves that I like to use when I make these. I put them on. You can do this really with no special tools. Um, this one has a little bit of a cut on the end. One second. You just need pliers that can cut really. And uh, this stuff is pretty tough. I've never had a turtle bite through it yet, but I'm sure there's one out there that could. Alright, so I like to start on the top end of the leader, I run it up through, and then bring it back and make a loop, and that loop is what I will tie my, my line to, and I put that in the pliers, crimp it down real good, you always want to test these when you're done, and then I take about, I don't know, 14 inches, Snip it again, and when I do this, I actually, because I've had this happen before, I put uh, double collars on this. Just twice to hold bigger turtles, they'll put a lot of stress on these, and I have had them straighten these out and pull this end out. But maybe there are other ways that this is done, this is just the way I do it, and I'm sharing it with you, so if you want to try and set some turtle lines, you can do this. Get it really tight. Crimp both of those down. And don't be afraid to really put pressure on them. And then, when I'm done, I like to take my loop end on my pliers like so grab the hook end really give it a couple good pulls that bar is very tight on there probably and I leave that barb up on the top so that way as I'm pulling even if this slips it won't hook me but this one is good from there I have this is 100 pound um, braided paracord nothing special just picked up at Walmart and put this through and basically uh, I'm not a knot guy I'm gonna tell you guys that right now Probably not what it's gonna be. but this is the same knot I use on my fishing line and it works out it hasn't failed me here so pull it tight cinch it down pull that tight 
And you've got your line. Now you can tie these off with a jug as a float to help keep the turtle up, or you can tie them off to a sapling or a limb, something relatively sturdy, because you can stake them into the ground. Um, a big turtle will pull pretty substantially. It'll lock into the mud and it'll go. The other thing you need in Pennsylvania is you need a piece of paper, something with your name, address, and phone number on it on your turtle line. So what I do is I take a piece of paper, write my name, phone number, address, I cover it in tape, and then I bend it back like this. I take scissors, knife, pliers, and I cut a little slit right here, like that. And then when I get to the spot, which I will here a little later, I run my line right through this. Sometimes I'll put it down a little bit further from where I tie it off. And I actually just loop that right back up around over the top. Kind of cinch that. So if the fish commission comes through, my line is tagged properly. It's up. They can walk right by, see it. You don't have to disturb my line. And we're legal. So I got some stinky bait out there. Let's go set some line. All right, so we're down here. Found where I'm going to tie off from. Game tag. My hook here. And me. This is actually groundhog me. there and you want to use a stronger meat you really don't I've heard people say chicken livers but if this is sitting out overnight you get a lot of perch bluegill other fish come through and really peck at that so if you use a softer meat chances are they'll peck most of that off of there before your turtle gets a chance to smell it and come and eat it so we get that ready Her out, and as that turtle takes that bait and maybe tries to go out, but I'm guessing tomorrow morning, if there's a turtle on here, it'll probably be right here underneath this bank, and my line will run underneath and I'll pull them out. But as it pulls, this tree moves a little bit, it's not stationary, so it takes some of the tension off of the line, it's not pulling, it's actually working kind of like a fishing rod does. So, 